Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have kind of a hybrid focused uh, GCP, Google Ads, and Snowflake ETL pipeline I wanna show you. Um, just cause I saw someone transforming Google Ads data using their official operator. Um, and I think it's a pretty relevant use case for anyone that is trying to transform and ingest information from Google Ads into any kind of centralized record keeping database. So that's what we're gonna go through today. We're going to go through, get our Google Ads data, show you how to collect that Google Ads data, um, and then validate it, check for nulls, do some light transformations, do some data quality checks, and then upload it to Google Cloud Storage before bringing it from Google Cloud Storage into Snowflake. Um, so good comprehensive DAG for getting started with ingesting and normalizing Google Ads data. And without further ado, let's get into it. So first thing we're gonna do, as we always do, is create a new environment. <clears throat> so here, see desktop, repos, and then here we're going to a new directory, Google Ads ETL, CD into that, and there we go. And then run astro dev init, and this is going to create a new astro runtime, fresh local environment of Airflow, really all you need to know. If you wanna know how to run the astro runtime, check out my other videos on it. Uh, but all it's gonna do is just let me create a local Airflow environment um, and run and build my DAG here. And first thing we need to do just to set up this environment is go into our requirements.txt file and then add a few different requirements. So not a whole ton, just the Apache Airflow providers, Google, Snowflake, uh, the Google ads package, and then also pandas for our data frame manipulation that we're going to do. Then just save this requirements.txt file, go to create a new DAG, and we'll just call this DAG Google ads etl.py, and then start building our DAG. So here, what we'll do is, again, first things first, import all of our different packages here. So importing DAG, task decorators, local file system to Google Cloud Storage operator, Google Cloud Storage to Snowflake operator, the days ago uh, util, so we can track, hey, has this run since X days ago, or tracking run every day, uh, task group for creating task groups, so we can do some parallel processing here, like we're in production. And then also pandas as PD for, again, data frame manipulation, OS for interacting with the sys uh, operating system, Google Ads clients, we can instantiate a hook into Google Ads to actually pull our data out. And then the Airflow variables models, because we're gonna save some things as Airflow variables here. Next, next step here is define a few different variables and our default arguments for the DAG. So here we'll just have start date one day ago, uh, retries two with a retry delay of 300 seconds. Then you're gonna put your Google Cloud Storage bucket here, Google Ads data and your campaign ID. Um, so the campaign ID that you're actually gonna be pulling out um, from Google Ads. And then your Snowflake staging area, the Snowflake table, schema, database, and connection ID. These are all gonna be used when we're actually interacting with Snowflake. Stage will be linked to this Google Cloud Storage bucket because that's gonna be your staging area for your Snowflake database. And then here, we're also gonna get your Google Ads uh, configuration. So this is where you're gonna have a YAML file. It's gonna contain all the information needed to connect to that Google Ads client. Um, and then we're gonna use that to actually hook into and connect into Google Ads. Um, and you can pull this all from the Google Ads interface, um, and I'll show you in a second. Um, but then once we have all of our different variables set up, next step is going to be creating our DAG here. Or sorry, not our DAG, this is the wrong code to paste. Um, here, we are going to be creating our DAG object, which is with all those default args we just defined as DAG, and then start defining all of our different tasks. So our first task here is going to be, and you might expect this, fetching the campaign IDs that we're going to want to use, um, that we're gonna to wanna to pull data from. So here, client, setting our Google Ads client, loading from storage, um, and here we're going to use that Google Ads YAML, um, and then we're going to connect it to the Google Ads service using the Google Ads client. I know, you do double verification there. Then we have this query that we're going to use to authenticate into Google Ads, or that we're going to need, use to pull the campaign idea, or the campaign ID for any campaigns that are currently enabled. And then here's where, if you want to insert your customer ID or filter for a particular customer, you can use this here, um, or no, sorry, your actual customer ID. Um, and then here, execute the query, search that stream, and then what this will do is go through the JSON response 
for every row in that response, it's then going to append it to this campaign IDs array that we're creating here. And then it's going to return an array of campaign IDs for use in our next task. Now, what is our next task, you might ask? Well, that is now fetching the campaign data now that we actually have the campaign IDs. And so how we're doing that, so here in this task, what we're doing is <laughs> fetching that campaign data. So it's gonna return this list of campaign IDs and then we're gonna use the dot .expand method for each campaign uh, within our Google Ads API. We're going to, again, same kind of motion for initiating that connection using the Google Ads YAML file um, and then selecting our query to get the campaign ID, clicks, impressions, cost micros, and conversions from a particular campaign. Um, again, just filtering for the current campaign ID. Then you have your customer ID here that you'll use um, and then execute that query to search for the stream, bring in all the different uh, attributes from the response you're gonna get. Um, so campaign ID, just again, appending this all to a new array of campaign data, then converting that into a pandas data frame and then saving that pandas data frame as a CSV uh, within the local file system. Um, and then returning that local file path directing to where that campaign data was stored. Um, so this, what this is gonna do is go for each campaign, create a new CSV for that campaign, and then save it and return the local file path for downstream use. And then in our next task, which is going to actually use this downstream, we're going to then ingest each of these campaign CSV files and validate and do some light transformations on them just to make sure you know, they're fitting our format for our business, right? Um, so here, validate and transform, reading in the file path. Again, so we can do this in parallel by, filter, by reading in all the file paths in the .expand method, reading in the CSV as a pandas data frame, then dropping any null rows, performing some data valid validity checks, making sure that any cost is gonna be greater than zero, calculated metrics, so here we're gonna calculate actually cost per click, our click-through rate, and uh, return on ad sale, um, or revenue on ad sale. Uh, so just some typical kind of cal you know, basic calculations you'll wanna do to get information around how your ads are performing using Google Ads, um, and then saving these all back into your local file system with a little clean file path. Um, so the underscore C clean CSV being appended to each of the clean file paths. Um, and then returning that clean file path for use downstream. And then our next task downstream is going to be taking these clean file paths that we're gonna generate of the uh, now clean data that's living in our local file store and uploading them into a Google Cloud storage bucket. So here, upload into GCS, we have our clean file path, our campaign ID, and then we have a destination path with the format of campaign ID. Um, so here, GCS bucket path, and then just passing in the format for the campaign ID that we want to assign for the bucket path. Um, and then what we're going to do is actually return a wrapped local file system to GCS operator. So we're kind of going to kind of use this. In, you could also break this out into two tasks. Um, so I, I just thought this was kind of funky. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to go through, but not necessarily best practices. Um, we're here, what you're doing is getting that file path, formatting it um, to the destination path within GCS, and then dynamically creating in these the different campaign IDs uh, as different operators um, with the local file system to GCS operator. So it's just gonna upload all those different CSVs into your Google Cloud Storage bucket that you've defined earlier. And then finally, we have load to Snowflake. Um, so our last task is just going to be actually loading that data into Snowflake. Um, and again, you know, and actually what we're gonna do is adjust this. Um, so, yeah, so I changed this logic up a little bit because I thought it was kind of stupid before. Um, and so essentially what we're gonna have here is instead of using that kind of jank task flow API wrapper, here we're just gonna directly use the operators and iterate through the campaign IDs. Um, so here, upload GCS, local file GCS operator um, to just upload each of these campaign IDs. And then similarly, for the load to Snowflake operator, use the GCS load to Snowflake operator, create, iterate through this, create a few different tasks that are all going to uh, upload into Snowflake. So actually, final improvement, because I don't like this either, and I love improving. And like I said, we're gonna use the dot .expand method here. So here, taking the local file system, using the dot .expand method and mapping to actually build the file path and then use dot .expand method to create multiple file or multiple parallel tasks 
map tasks off the same task instance, so much cleaner and much less load on the DAG processor. And then similarly, doing the same thing for the GCS to Snowflake operator um, using that dot partial and dot expand method um, so that we can bring that uh, or build dynamic task, map tasks in the same way. Make use of the best features in Airflow because it'll make your life a lot easier. Then just setting all the relationships. So you just have the fit mapping here of campaign IDs, campaign data files, validate files, upload GCS, load to Snowflake, pretty linear. And then also here, you're going to set the dynamic task mapping for campaign IDs, fetch campaign data, and validate transform. The reason why you do this twice here and with the dot expand and then also set the bit mapping down here is you'll get errors if you try to do it all as part of the bit mapping. I don't know why, um, but it just gets funky. This is the only way I could get this to work. Um, so here you go. A fresh way to do parallel DAC or processing of Google Ads data from many campaigns, upload in a snowflake from Google Cloud Storage Bucket. Um, that is all I have for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Sorry for kind of some workshopping live at the end of the video, but I hope you like seeing the, the magic behind the curtain. Uh, but above all else, have a great rest of your day. Diddy guy out.